Hey guys, coming back at you with another reaction video as requested by the majority of you had wanted to see more. So we have a really good one today. Don't miss this one. Watch it to the end. Stick around. Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to watch a few different videos and react to them. Video number one of Filipina talking about how being poor is not a bad thing. All right, video number one. Let's listen to what she has to say about being poor. I am proud to say that I am a poor Filipino. But despite of being poor, I am academically excellent, competitive, talented, if I must add, and well-mannered. In my country, we have a subject that we call GMRC. That stands for Good Manners and Right Conduct. I didn't graduate from a prestigious school, but I can speak with class and my English is quite okay. If being poor means we can make our man feel respected, happy, and loved, then we wouldn't mind being poor. If it means being kind and nice to people, then it's okay. We poor people doesn't keep ourselves busy by putting on makeups, long, fake nails, lashes, and stuffs. We keep ourselves busy by cleaning the house, taking care of our partner, while working at the same time. If being poor means we are not rude, then that's okay. We are happy being poor. We are proud being poor. All right. So uh, the first thing I wanted to mention is she mentioned a class, uh, and Maya actually told me about this, called GMRC. I believe that means... Good Moral and Right Conduct. Good Moral and Right Conduct. And I think it teaches them how to be a good person, have manners, how to treat others. Apparently, very lacking, at least in America, and I'm sure other Western countries. Now, I remember when I was a kid, we used to have a class uh, called Home Economics. You guys may remember that, where girls would often take these classes to learn how to cook and, and how to take care of the household. Uh, because at that time, at least when I was a kid, most families were, were, were the traditional family where the girls still stayed home and took care of the household and the kids, which is every bit as important as a guy going out and working, in my opinion. I think both are of equal importance. And somewhere along the line, females, at least in the West, have decided that uh, this, is, this is beneath them. Um, you know, they shouldn't have to take care of the kids, you know, and... Uh, they did away with it and I think that's a huge mistake and actually I, I believe I was reading an article that some schools are trying to bring it back uh, Maya told me that here in the Philippines they have a class I believe it's called TLE she, she said and it is similar to what we had at least when I was a child in the 80s similar to home economics and again I hope that uh, they don't follow the path of the United States and get rid of it and get rid of their good conduct and morals uh, class because I think those are very important things. Again, I think severely lacking in the West. But this has been video number one. And uh, I think you can tell it's just the nature of a Filipina. They're just not loud and abrasive, you know. They're just they're feminine is the best word I can use to describe it. But let's take a look at video number two. two. Hey. An American girl on our side for once. <laughs> Let's hear what she has to say. My take on passport bros as an American who's lived in the Philippines for two years is that most Filipino women who are dating foreigners, they know English very well. They're smart. They're not uneducated. Real quick, I want to say, this girl's attitude, different. Part of the reason, I think, she actually said she lived in the Philippines for two years. Well, that uh, is something that most probably haven't done and which is why they have such a uh, negative attitude and misinformation. It's going to happen and what's going on and they know the expectations of what a possible marriage might entail. The part where I get a little worried is I've seen a lot of passport bros be first of all predators as young as 13 years old and second of all they seem very very hurt and just like really jaded towards American women and kind of controlling and just really aggressive. So now I'm not going to totally disagree with her on this part. There are, we see it in the news here in the Philippines. It happens. You get a foreigner arrested for dating an underage girl or you get 
um, you know, guys that have just come out the come out of these horrible relationships and are very jaded against Western girls. And and I'll be the first to admit, when I first came here, I was uh, I was a bit jaded myself, and I've gotten over that. I don't have any really hate towards Western women. Um, I really don't. I just have. I just know that uh, I would not want to marry an American girl again. But uh, do I? Am I consumed with uh, hate? No, of course not. Uh, but yes, I know some guys come out here and they are just really jaded. And so I do see her point. Um, I don't. I, I think the sexual predators is kind of few, far, and in between. For the most part, the guys that I see over here are just looking for a good girl and a better life, to live less expensively, less stress in life, and to uh, have a woman who really takes care of them and have a mutual relationship where they both respect each other and take care of each other. Let's listen to the rest of her. Well, that would be something to consider as well if you want that type of personality as a partner. And also, when people move to the U.S., you know, they have a foreign spouse. Sometimes, not always, sometimes that uh, foreign spouse is isolated, doesn't have very good connections. So if anything were to be bad or if they would need any help, I'm just worried that some people might not have the resources to get the appropriate help. Or I do want to mention that it wasn't that long ago that a guy had reached out to me and said, uh, I live in Ohio, I think it was Ohio, and I have a farmhouse, and I live like way out, and he's telling me that uh, he's, he brought home a Filipino wife, and he's just madly in love. Um, he doesn't want to teach her how to drive. He doesn't really bring her out that much, and she just stays home. Stays home. Uh, no neighbors or anything. Complete isolation, which I think is completely wrong, and uh, guess what? She ended up contacting her family in secret, uh, and they eventually were able to raise enough money for her to get a ticket and go back home, and she left them. And uh, honestly, I don't really blame her. Phil Filipinos are very social. To take a Filipina from a very social environment and then to go take her to your farmhouse in the middle of nowhere in Ohio, she doesn't know how to drive, you don't want to teach her how to drive, and you have no neighbors, and you keep her away from other people while you go work. Uh, honestly, what do you expect? Or support or community they need. But I don't care who you guys marry. <laughs> if it's a foreigner or not, obviously I'm married to a foreigner myself. But I think there are just some parts to be cautious about. And then also just remember, a lot of American women have had really bad experiences with men. So when they see like that kind of rough personality go into another country, um, and having women there, they might just be a little upset or triggered because they don't want women to experience things that they have also experienced. So that's my take. So that last part, I, I again, uh, yes, but I think the guys have just, they're just fed up with it, you know. Um, they're just fed up with losing everything in court. Um, you know their possessions the marriage goes south women don't want to even contribute to the household anymore you know other I mean yes financially maybe but things have changed so much and uh, you know it's a real issue so guys uh, come up to the Philippines find a great wife you know but uh, then again you also have to remember if you're gonna come out here and you're gonna live uh, your chances of your relationship working out with your Filipina are much greater than if you go and take her back to the U.S. The majority of the time where I hear about Filipinas and foreigners not working out, no children involved. Uh, maybe the guy can't have children. Or you don't let her start to work or, or get involved with community. You keep her isolated. So... The closer you are in age, if you do have a family together, the more likely you're going to stay together. Uh, maybe a 40-year age gap works here in the Philippines, and it might work out just fine, and she might agree to not having kids. But I, I can promise you, more than likely, if you take her to the U.S. or another Western country, and you guys have a 40-year age gap, and you can't even give her kids, eventually, it probably won't work out. That's just my honest opinion on it.
Guys, this last one for me is absolutely shocking. I was actually sickened by it, uh, watching it, and her reaction, and the deceit, and the lies. Check this one out, guys. In the case of Manser versus Seer, as it pertains to 20-year-old Dylan Seer, Mr. Manser, you are not oh, God. his father. Oh, man. Insane. Five years in prison. I'd Five years in prison he spent for not paying child support to his son who was not his. Let's hear, let's hear the, the judge really goes off. Let's hear about this. And honestly, this is, uh, can you blame, like this says, can you blame men for wanting to leave? This is why more and more people are wanting to come here. I, Dylan, I'm sorry, bro. Uh, this is why. This is why I did what I did. But this is and nothing I made up. The lab did You didn't made it all oh, up. No, I did not. Well, those results oh, apparently I don't know any up. of those people on that form. Oh, my God. This is clearly the most shocking Very much. news we've ever gotten in this courtroom. Oh my God. She should be convicted of some crime. No, I should no not. Kidding. I didn't that is Manson. fraud. Mr. Manson. No kidding. That is fraud. I know you're upset. Unbelievable. <laughs> I know so it's insane. overwhelming. I need a moment with Dylan because I want to make sure he understands. Do you want to find out who your father is? Of course. Miss Sear, do you know? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> you know who his father is. What? Yes, I talk to him still. She knows who the father is. She says she still talks to him. And, and she let this guy continue to pay child support and go to prison. I mean, she should be convicted of a crime. I don't know how this is even possible that she isn't. Listen, get away from my son. Get away from my son, she says. You can pay the child we support. We apologize. Get away from my son. And I have another breath. He's calling me a liar. You cannot stand there and really suggest that you cannot comprehend why this man would not have any type of ill feeling, frustration, or regret as it relates to anything involving you. Five years in prison. And then I say... Do you know who your son's father is? And you say, yes, I'm still in touch with him. That is a really huge pill to swallow. Unbelievable. I mean, uh, Maya showed this to me. I, w I wasn't even going to put it in the video. And I was like, and then I was like, oh, okay, I got to share this. And it may, some of you may have seen it, but I just couldn't believe it. It's just uh, sickening. And... Uh, Will she get any prison time or anything? No. And she says, she know, oh, yeah, I knew who the father was. Yeah, I keep in touch with him. But she let him continue to pay child support and go to prison. Why are guys leaving in droves to come to the Philippines and other countries? Well, there you go. Guys, thanks for watching. Check out my website where you can sign up with a consultation for me. You can uh, check out my Geo Essentials if you're going to travel or come live in the Philippines and a lot more information about visas and other things all on my geointhephilippines.com website. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you next time. Bye.